Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Thursday, July the 14th. Well, it's opening day at Saratoga. We've got two stakes. Nicole Russo and I have the grade three Schuylerville for our spa babies race. Check that out on DRF TV. Mike Beer and I, we got the Wilton. This race is at the new one mile shoot distance on the main track for three year old fillies and some promising ones. Let's take a look at this field. You can scan the QR code for race of the day access. Uh, on your mobile device, and of course, you can bet the opening day Saratoga card with your DRF Bets account, which includes free Formulator Pass performances. Mike, we first have to talk about the shoot. S basically starting this race on the clubhouse turn. It's a short run, a quick left-hand turn. And the last time they did this, about 30 years ago, it seemed you had to be in posts one through four in order to succeed. Yeah, if you were drawn outside, um, at least in the last iteration of this shoot, we'll see how similar it is this time, Dan. It's been a while, but uh, the last time they did this, if you were outside of post four, you were in pretty big trouble. Well, we're going to take a look at the time for U.S. pace projector for this race. Angitude is stretching out off of three lifetime sprint races. She has shown sprint speed. I'm expecting Joel Rosario to make good use of her speed from post four and make that quick left hand to turn with the lead. The break is going to be key for Classy Tarabi because if she does break, she might have the speed to extricate herself from a tough outside post and find a good spot. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Um, you know, off of the layoff last time, and it was a pretty long layoff. She actually ran pretty well in there, Dan, but she did not break sharply from the gate. And it wound up costing her that day. It could cost her again here if she doesn't get out of the gate um, this time. That really hasn't been a big problem for her um, through her first four starts. So I'm hoping she breaks a little better in here. She's got a lot of talent. Number one, Goddess of Fire, seeks her first victory since her career debut at Saratoga last year, but she's run some excellent races. Multiple graded stakes place, the Rachel Alexandra, the Gulfstream Oaks, and she was just in too, way too tough last time out in the Kentucky Oaks against the likes of Secret Oath and Nest. You don't worry about ground loss breaking from the rail, and if the pace is fast like Timeform US expects it to be, Goddess of Fire could get the right setup. Yeah, she could. I mean, she's a she's a pretty nice horse. You're right. She hasn't won a race since her debut, but she's run well several times in, in some pretty tough spots. You know, the Gulfstream Oaks two starts back. That's not a race that I love overall, but she ran well that day. And she also ran well on the Rachel Alexandra before that to just get beat. Um, I don't really have any knocks on this horse. And this is probably the right spot for her dropping back to the mile. Probably not a big deal for this horse. And she might fall into a real trip here from the inside. Although the buyer speed figures thus far have been light for the number two, Gina Romantica, you just have a feeling that this seven-figure yearling purchase is getting ready for a breakout for Chad Brown because Chad's treated her like a nice source since day one. She's won two of three, but right after the maiden win at, at uh, Tampa Bay, they threw her in the grade of three Beaumont. That didn't work out. She faced a very nice horse in Matarea that day. She bounced out of that race to win this effort at Belmont over a sloppy track. I like the improved speed she showed in this first level allowance. She has to work very hard to win, Mike. I still think she's learning the game, but I think there's something here. Whether this is too much too soon, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not an easy spot for her. I agree with you, though. That, you know, Just her showing up in this race is probably a, a pretty good sign of co confidence from Chad Brown, and especially off of this performance, because it's just you know not a very strong effort, Dan. It was a wet track, and maybe she didn't like it. Um, she just got her nose down on the wire there um, in a very short field, and the horse that she's beating there is not very good. Um, but listen, I guess she did what she had to do. I really liked her debut. I thought she did some really good things that day. Um, when they tested her in the Beaumont, though, that wasn't a good performance. She did not run well that day. She's got a lot to prove. St. Martin Girl, the number three, another horse taking a step up in class. This out of the maiden special weight ranks. A victory in her fifth lifetime start going a one-turn mile in a sixth turn. We'll watch that race right now, and St. Martin Girl is pocketed, turning into the stretch. The seam opens up for a rad, and this one's on her way. Solid buyer speed figure for her, but another one that has to improve uh, considerably to face some of these stakes uh, class fillies. Yeah, it's just a really tough spot for her. Um, you know, she had run well in a couple of her starts before this at Parks. This is a, a race where she just happened to get a perfect trip. Um, you see the two to five favorite there on the outside, just basically doing nothing through the stretch um, and not really putting up much of a fight. And this horse managed to get the job done. Um, just showing up here with that kind of a performance, it's not going to get her anything against these horses. She's going to have to improve by a lot.
Angie Tude is the number four stretch out sprinter expected to be on the lead according to Time Form US. She's raced three times in her career, two wins, and plenty of excuses for the only loss. Her first race off of a lengthy layoff and the only time she ever raced over a wet track. Now, she's going to have to prove herself at this distance, and just at the face of it, she's a violence out of a city zip mare. Maybe there's more speed than stamina in the pedigree. But I also have a feeling this mile distance at uh, Saratoga might play very well to speed horses. Yeah, I'm worried about that, too. Um, and we'll see. Now that she's third off the layoff, stretching back out, um, I wonder if she can improve enough to make herself really dangerous in here. I can't say that I loved her win last time, Dan, but she did run fine in there. I really liked her debut uh, last November. Though. I thought she looked really, really good winning that race. So I do think there's some talent here. Now, while she didn't like the wet track two starts back, Sweet Solare might be here looking for a wet track. Both of her lifetime wins have come on off going. Last time out, she caught a wet track in the Jersey Girl. She just caught a very hot filly who came back to win the grade three victory ride last week, only with a 74 buyer speed figure. Sweet Solari is going to add to the pace picture. If she runs here, she's cross-centered on Friday. Yeah, she went fine last time. Um, overall, got a good trip after not being fast enough to make the lead in there. Um, just sort of sat on the rail and, you know, she ran fine. She just wasn't good enough to go with those horses. Um, her win two starts back. I mean, I guess she ran well that day too, Dan, but man, did she beat a couple of horses who, I don't know, they'd be, you know, 100 to 1 in this race. I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like she has some talent. I'm not sure this is the right spot for her. Pletcher sends out the one, also sends out the six, also sends out the nine. Let's talk a little bit about number six, Favor, a horse that won both of her starts going a one-turn mile at Gulfstream, then caught just tough competition. Champion Echo Zulu in the Fairgrounds Oaks. Last time out in the Black Eyed Susan, she had a lousy post position, and she took on Interstate Daydream, who was slowly asserting herself as a very good three-year-old filly. She came back and won the Indiana Oaks last week with a 93 buyer speed figure. I wonder if Favor wants to go a little bit longer, even though both of her wins have come at the mile. I think she's a, a sort of a sneaky fit in here. Yeah, I do too. I think she's dangerous in this race. Um, it's interesting. I, I personally like her in here because they're cutting back. And um, when I watched that Black Eyed Susan, I feel like she just didn't want to go that far, at least in that spot she didn't. Because overall... Her trip was a pretty good one, even though she had an outside post. She didn't get, she didn't lose a lot of ground. She followed a dare manner into the stretch, only a couple lengths behind that horse. And she just didn't really kick in there, um, wound up finishing fifth without threatening. But her Fairgrounds Oaks was good. Her two one turn miles uh, wins at Gulfstream were both good. She has tactical speed. I think there's plenty to like here. Tarabi is the number seven going out for a very underrated trainer who had a big meet at Saratoga in 2021. She sent out Tarabi to finish second in the spin away behind Echo Zulu. Then she proved that race was no fluke at all. Running off a little bit of a layoff in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies and going two turns for the first time. She ran a good third behind two pretty good Phillies. And then unfortunately, she was injured. She went to the sidelines for a while. First off the layoff, okay, she was beaten at odds on. She likely needed the race and maybe was using that as a springboard to this. Yeah, I mean, plenty of uh, ways to mitigate that performance. And not that she even ran poorly in there, Dan, but again, she just didn't break sharp from the gate and wound up sort of back off the pace while the winner of that race just got absolutely loose on a slow pace in there. They were not going fast. This horse had to move up on the outside, and then all she could do was chase that horse home, and she just couldn't make a real impression on her. But I thought all in all, she ran fine. I liked all three of her starts as a two-year-old. I think this horse is pretty good. The only three-time winner in the field is the number eight. Let's be clear. Coming off of a victory in a $50,000 claiming event at Belmont, going seven-eighths of a mile over a wet track, a wet track that she seems to appreciate. Let's watch Let's Be Clear performance. And as we see here, she's getting off the inside. She worked out a pretty nice trip in this race under Manny Franco, and she's going to sprint on home to overcome a slow pace to win. They went the half in 47 flat. She was odds on. She was supposed to win. Now she takes a big step up in class. Always got to respect Linda Rice off the claim. Yeah, you do, especially when she moves them up. Uh, when Linda claims one and moves it up in class, that's usually a pretty good sign. Um, obviously, this is a filly who's, you know, going to really have to improve against the horses that she's facing here. And she's going to have to do it from a pretty tough outside post, too. Very tough outside post for the nine. Amore showed some ability last year. Grade one placed, although a well-beaten third in the frisette. She eventually won her maiden, and then she was walked off the track. I don't know what happened to her at Keeneland, who starts right. back, but Todd found a great spot for her off of the layoff, going the one-turn mile at Laurel. Let's watch this race. She was bet down to odds on, and for a brief second turning for home, it looks like she's in a bit of hot water, but she does assert her class, and she's able to sprint on home to win comfortably at the end. 
<laughs> yeah, she's going to get the job. It looks like both the horses to her outside got by her there in the upper stretch, Dan. But she just digs back in and she's going to eventually re-rally here to get the job done. It's not how you want your three to five shots to, to necessarily be winning. Uh, but she did get it done in there. She's very consistent. She shows up and she runs. Save that Keeneland race two back. She shows up and she runs every time. She's just a little slow on the way into this race. Her best races have come perhaps when she's on or near the lead. And highly unlikely that's going to happen here. The good news is she dropped way back in her debut at Saratoga last year and came with the run. It'll be interesting to see how she is able to deal with the outside post position. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. All the latest DRF TV video offerings throughout Saratoga and Del Mar summer. Top pick time for our Thursday race of the day, opening day at the spa. We're both going with Tarabi. I think she's the class of the race. I think she gained enough from a fitness standpoint last time out. And I think if she breaks, she can work out the right trip. Yeah, that's how I looked at it too. I just like all of her races. And I thought she ran fine off the layoff last time with plenty of excuses. Um, it just looks like a really good spot for her. But I'll tell you what, there are a lot of, there are a lot of good fillies in here and a, and a few different horses could win this race. We're both going to go 7-4 in the Wilton. $135,000 is the purse. It kicks off the 50-cent pick four at Saratoga on opening day. Good luck. 